Well, good evening and welcome to Forge Youth Ministry here at Compassion Rafford. Uh, my name is Pastor Chris. Um, as you can see, I'm in my office right now uh, working on some things as I'm on vacation this week. Uh, but um, you're probably used to us being live uh, from the church on Wednesday nights. Uh, but tonight our church is doing its annual Thanksgiving communion encounter service. Uh, it's just going to be a time of worship uh, and encouragement. And then we take communion together as a church body. So if you're watching this, just know that it's recorded and you can stop at any time and go over live either to our YouTube page or to our Facebook page, and you can actually participate in the worship service tonight. And then come back, because I promise my message is not going to be very long tonight. Um, but this month, we've been talking in our youth group with our students about going big to go home. And uh, one of the things that we have really wanted to focus on is what kind of heart and what kind of life and lifestyle should we be focusing on as we develop our character and our walk with Christ so that as we live our life, whether God gives us 10 years or 100 years, we want to be able to be ready to go home, which ultimately means eternity in heaven. Um, what I wanted to talk about tonight, since tomorrow is Thanksgiving, is uh, maybe a little nugget to add in the go big to go home, because I believe that uh, in all honesty, many Christians today struggle with an attitude of gratitude, uh, not to use that cliche, but we want to have an attitude of gratitude and, and quite frankly, a heart of just being thankful for what God has blessed us with and uh, uh, thankful for what he has done for us in our lives. Because uh, I think too often times we get caught up in circumstances and, and not the blessings of God. So um, let's just be very honest up front. This year, 2020, has been amazingly disappointing for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Uh, if it hasn't been the battle with COVID, it's been a political issue. It's been a school issue, uh, the lack of continuity and consistency with our everyday life. And a lot of people have felt down and depressed frustrated, angry, uh, or maybe sometimes you're just kind of now on you know, cruise control and you're just trying to get through this year with this mindset of 2021 is going to be better. And I'm not saying that it is, and I'm not saying that it isn't. What I am saying is, is right now we are in the moment that we're in here. And so our attitude should be just to have a heart of gratitude because you never know when things are going to change. Uh, let's be very honest. When 2020 kicked off, I will speak for myself, coming out of the Christmas holiday last year and into the new year, I was making plans for, as the director of Rock Club, our summer program, uh, our homework room uh, and the after school program at Rock Club was moving on smoothly. And then all of a sudden, we had to go into this completely different mode of setting up uh, a typical tutoring program in the evenings uh, we had to set it up to where we could help students with their class throughout the course of the entire day. And that met its own challenges, uh, challenges that were technology-based, challenges that were staffing-based, social distancing, um, and then, of course, just the basic standards of making sure everybody was healthy while they were at work. Um, I know that it took its challenges with me um, at home. Uh, I haven't shared this with many people, but I had to make a, a health decision um, that probably in hindsight now, as we sit here today, was not the best. Uh, but there was a financial reason why I made the choice. And the good that came out of it was I started running and I felt like I got healthier in a lot of ways. And I am healthier in a lot of ways. Uh, but after a recent doctor's visit, I realized I still got to make some changes. And I'm okay with that because at least I'm here to stay in the fight and I'm able to make those changes. So as negative as this year has been for me and for other people, uh, I'm not going to focus on the negative. I want to focus on what God has blessed me with. And so I'll start with this. What has God blessed me with this year? Well, number one, I'm still alive. So I count that as, as great. Uh, I have a great bunch of kids in our youth ministry that uh, we are growing together as a team. My staff has grown and we have come together and they have a heart for Jesus and they have a heart to serve these kids. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. I have my beautiful wife. Both of my sons have been married in recent years, uh, and I've seen a lot of God blessing on them, but I had a granddaughter that was born on May the 4th, which is a Star Wars holiday for those of you who follow that. Um, little Lucianne is growing up, and she's healthy, and I get to spend time with her on occasion, and you know, I'm being blessed to be a grandfather, and I, I believe that in the future I'm going to be blessed with more grandchildren, so I'm excited about that. So I think if we take a step back and we can count the many blessings that God has given us, 
the many blessings that we have as families, as individuals, as a nation. Uh, I know that a lot of people were disappointed with the outcome of the election. It's irrelevant. God is still on the throne. He's still in charge. So it doesn't matter who God elected. I'm thankful that my God is still in control and he still has a plan for my life and all of our lives, including a plan for this nation. So I'm not discouraged. I'm not going to allow myself to be discouraged. So what does Jesus teach us about being thankful? Well, let me start with this. In the book of Matthew chapter 17, and we'll start with verse 11, Jesus had an actual encounter with 10 men that truly define what it means to be grateful and thankful. I'm going to start off by reading just a couple of verses, then I'll jump into the story. It says, as Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee on his way to Jerusalem, as he went into a village, 10 men with a skin disease met him. They stood at a distance, sound familiar? And shouted, Jesus, teacher, have mercy on us. I think a lot of us right now are probably in a position where as 2020 has drug on and it seems like the never-ending battle with COVID and social distancing, wearing a mask, whatever it may be, we're all at a place right now where we're just tired and we're begging for Jesus just to have mercy on our lives, on mercy on our family, definitely mercy on people that are truly struggling with COVID, especially our frontline workers uh, in the hospitals and uh, you know in EMS that have to deal with this on a regular basis. We should be very grateful that they pour out their hearts and their energy to take care of those in genuine need. But here, these 10 men were living in a time where there were no hospitals. As a matter of fact, for the type of skin disease they had, there was absolutely no treatment. As a matter of fact, that's why they were separated or social distanced from Jesus and other people, because it was believed that this skin disease was contagious. And if you caught it, in essence, socially speaking and physically speaking, it was a death sentence. They could no longer be with their spouses, their children, their families. They could no longer work and produce. They basically lived <clears throat> in caves where people would not be allowed to go near them. So food would be lowered to them, you know, and they had to create their own little home and city in these caves away from society. That's a kind of death sentence that, quite frankly, I don't think anybody would want to experience living alone and separated from those that they cared about and loved. Well, here's the interesting part about this story. Somehow they still knew who Jesus was. And I think that's the case with many of us. We know who Jesus is. And they knew that he would have a healing power. He could just speak healing into their lives and their lives would be changed. And as they somehow knew Jesus was coming, they cried out to him, have mercy on us. Now going to verse 14, this is Jesus's response. Because Jesus didn't shy away from those in need. Even if it could have meant he would have caught the disease. Of course, he's the son of God. He wouldn't have. But people didn't still completely believe he was the son of God. So to see Jesus confidently walking into that, here's what he said. When he saw them, he told them, show yourselves to the priest. And they went and they were made clean. That's it. As soon as he spoke it, go speak to the priest. Now, why did he say that? Well, it was customary in the Old Testament, and they were still living under this law, that once a person had been healed of a sickness or they had Whatever the case may be, they, they were healed. They were brought through a certain circumstance. They had to go and be clean. And then to be able to rejoin their family, they had to show themselves to the priest. And the priest would examine their, their skin and then determine them to be clean. And if they were clean, they could rejoin society, rejoin their family. So this was a big deal. And Jesus didn't give them a long diatribe. He just said, what was it? Um, go show yourself to the priest. You've been made whole. Now, Going, and this is, as they went, they were made clean. But then one of them saw that he was healed and he turned back and praised God in a loud voice. He quickly bowed at Jesus' feet and listen to this, he thanked him. The man was, by the way, a Samaritan. And if you know the story of the good Samaritan, Samaritans were basically the outcast of society uh, that most Jewish people would avoid at all costs. Yet that was the one that went back to Jesus after he realized he had been made healed and said, and I quote, thank you. Now, here's what's interesting about that. <clears throat> the other nine men also heard that they were healed, but they took off to get approval from the priest so they could rejoin their families. And I can understand that to a degree because 
I would be excited about being reunited with my wife or my children or even little Lucy, especially if I had to be isolated from them. So they took off because they got what they wanted. They wanted to be healed and they got it. That's the heart of our father. He gives us good gifts. He wants us to be, be healed. He wants us to be blessed financially. He wants us to be blessed in so many other ways. But when they got what they wanted, they left to follow the law or they follow the procedure just to rejoin their families. Nine guys left. One looked at his skin and realized the significance of this healing power, the grace and the mercy that had been shown to him by Jesus. Yeah, he was healed too. But instead of going to get the approval of priests so he could rejoin his family and rejoin his children and get back to work and to get back to having a normal life, he turned around and went to his heavenly father and he kneeled and said, thank you, thank you. Jesus asked at that point, this is interesting, and this is where we close. Weren't 10 men made clean? Weren't there 10 of you? Where are the other nine? Only this foreigner came back to praise God. So then Jesus told the man, get up and go home. Your faith has been made or has made you well. To me, that's powerful. And it should speak something to us that Jesus recognized that even when he blesses us, he takes notice when we don't say thank you for the many blessings. Now, I have to admit, I'm guilty of many a time when it's dinner time. Uh, we, I love to say the blessing, but I'm not going to lie. Some nights I'm hungry and I just eat. I forget to say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the food. Because you're the provider of this meal. You're the provider of the income from the job that I have to pay for this. I have nothing without Jesus. And that's a very humbling place to be. But it's okay because I'm dependent upon my Heavenly Father. And I know that many of you are too. So as we go into this Thanksgiving service tonight, as we go into Thanksgiving tomorrow and into this weekend, here's my challenge to you, young people that are watching, and, or if you're an adult watching, thank you for being here. Um, I want you to do something tonight. I want you to take out a piece of paper, not a big old sheet, just an index card, and just begin to write down things that you're thankful for. Parents, be thankful because I have my mother still, and she's truly a blessing to me. I love my mom. Hi, mom. My dad passed away 13 years ago, but I'm thankful that the, my heavenly father blessed me with a father uh, who loved me and provided for me and took care of me, was stern with me when he needed to be, but also understanding and encouraging when he needed to be. I'm thankful for my brother and his wife. I'm thankful for all my nieces and nephews. I'm thankful for my wife's family. I'm thankful for my wife. She's awesome. I'm thankful for my boys and their wives, for my granddaughter. I'm thankful for my home, the opportunity to be able to minister. I'm thankful that I get to hang out with kids every day uh, and to be able to teach them and lead them. It's a humbling experience to be in this position. What are you thankful for? Is it your job? Is it your friends at school? A significant other? Is it? Are you thankful for the job that you have to be able to provide, especially as we head into this Christmas season? I don't know what it is, but after you make the list, I promise you, you're probably going to run out of room on the card or the piece of paper. Stop what you're doing. Get off by yourself for a moment. Turn off your phone. Turn off the radio. Turn off the TV. Look at yourself. And then get on your knees and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessings. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 through 18, it's very simple. It says this, rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in any and all circumstances, good or bad, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. How does this develop into our character? I believe if we do it once, we could do it twice. We could do it three times. And I close with this. In Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 5, it says, not only so, but we are also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance then develops our character. Character develops hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts and through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Man, that should excite you. This is the walk that we do every day. And as we do it consistently, we grow. We develop perseverance. We develop our character. We develop hope. 
All of this is found through Jesus Christ. So with that said, that's the conclusion of my message today. I pray that you and your family have a very blessed Thanksgiving. Be sure to say thank you to your heavenly father who has provided all things for you. If you need prayer in the comment section, feel free just to leave me a note. I promise you I will take time to pray over each and every comment. With that said, you guys have a blessed Thanksgiving. I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday night when we begin our series, The Journey. Take care.